Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This is my top 10 stocks as we head into Friday, April 12th. This will be a technical analysis breakdown. So if you're someone that uses charts within your trading, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about charts and how they can be used as a tool to help make good decisions as a trader, this will be a video for you. And then for you Bitcoin traders, stick around because I will do a Bitcoin analysis as a bonus at the end. Real quick, a couple of clarifications. Number one, the candlestick that you see right there will be moving around. That is because the market's still open for a small amount of time. But I like to do these videos when the market is still open because sometimes we can capture some really interesting late day price movement. And then second, I'll be using the 30 minute time frame. I Meaning each one of these candlesticks represents 30 minutes worth of time. So ticker symbol number one, NKLA. And a very, very rough day on this one. Big move down, big volume. And from a trading standpoint, we have a pretty, at least I think it's a pretty interesting trend line here that can be put in a place right here at that level, which just for those of you that like to try to play, you know, turnarounds, maybe play not necessarily full blown reversals, because I'm not saying this thing's headed back up over a dollar. But I mean, if the price levels out and then can come up and break through that trend line, guaranteed, no, but reasonable think that that could create some additional buying pressure and create maybe even if it's just, so let's just assume worst case scenario, it's, it's a dead cat bounce. So the price comes up here and then just rolls right back over. Well, from a trading standpoint, from here to there, I mean, that that's some good wiggle room there. there there's enough to you know pull out a, a trade within that. Again, not saying that'll occur, and that's also a worst case where it is just a fake break, dead cat bounce. But from a trading standpoint, that could be a very, very interesting situation, especially this one, pretty popular stock. Um, I don't know if it's quite a cult stock, but definitely a lot of people watching it. And sometimes these stocks that do have a lot of eyeballs and they get beat down in a hurry, there can be some very impressive technical bounces. So if you like to play these scenarios, you like penny stocks, certainly keep an eye on that trend line and see if there's any sort of turnaround. Next one, CADL, very, very nice move today and starting to come back to life. Let me zoom out here a little bit just so you can see a bit more context because at least I think from the my eyeball test here, it's looking like, yeah, right there at $7.85. Going to be that main area of resistance, but going back here, you can see this general area there prevented the price from going up. And once again, prevented the price from going up. So 785, again, I'm not saying the price can't break through that level or anything like that. I'm just saying it makes sense why once again, right there, the price did get rejected by it. But moving forward, we have once of those, you know, potentially if you want to just call it a self-fulfilling prophecy, where you have a lot of people watching that level. And if you have people that play breakouts and then they say, oh, I'm a breakout player. Oh, look, that's breaking out. Oh, I'm supposed to buy. Well, that in and of itself could create and cause more people to buy. So if you like to play breakout, 785 could be a very interesting level. If you like to play more so pullbacks, the main area of support, I would say, is that purple line there, that 50 period moving average. So keep an eye on that. Uh, but in my opinion, at least the most interesting dynamic about this one is all about that level right there. And can the price finally get the breakup through 785? We'll see what happens. Next one, R-E-N-T, and as I speak, this one is having a very nice last 30 minutes, and like I said earlier in the video, that's why I like to do these when the market's still open, because sometimes we can capture them, uh, this really nice action right here. So very nice last 30 minutes right now, and good solid pattern has formed. So let me get this pattern here drawn into play. So we have the support part of the pattern right there. Let me change that to green to represent support, and then we have resistance portion of the pattern right there. And let me make it all one color and make it hopefully easier to see. So we have our resistance, we have our support, we have the explosive move right there. This would be known as a bull flag pattern. Now, just because something's a bullish pattern does not mean for sure guaranteed the price is going to go upwards, but would it be shocking? No, I don't think anybody would be shocked if a bull pattern or excuse me, a bull flag pattern all of a sudden went higher. So again, if the price can come up here and get the break up through there, that could very well create some good solid upwards buying pressure. So if you like bull flag patterns, definitely keep an eye on R-E-N-T. Next one here, R-L-Y-B, and another nice pattern here. And what I like about this one is, yeah, you had the very nasty pullback here. And when things get nasty like that, it's a valid question. Uh-oh, is this the beginning of the end? Uh, but got the answer, and the answer was a nice slow and steady uptrend pretty much the remainder of the day. Now, let me be clear, and as I've said, we'll probably say more times, just because the, there's a nice little trend line is not a guarantee that there will continue to be a trend, but it's a whole lot more plausible. Case in point, let's just say that this pullback was still going on and dropping, 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 dropping. I'm sitting here saying, hey, it's looking like this thing has got some strength and it's going to turn around. You'd be totally justified to say, what are you talking about? Based on what? The price is literally just dropping down. But that's not the case here. You do have an upwards trend line, so it becomes a way more valid at this point to suggest that maybe this thing has leveled out and some strength is coming back in, which makes, in my opinion, 
325, that key area resistance, a good high volume break of that level, I think gives it a whole good chance to go up there and at least do battle with that high right there, if not even go higher than that. But all things considered, very nasty pullback originally part of the day, but has been slowly creeping back upwards. So can it get the break of 325? We'll have to see how it closes the week on Friday. Next one here, AAPL, Apple, and what an absolutely monster move on this one. Uh, so really nothing I can say today in and of itself other than, uh, and I mean, like I said, all kidding aside, it's basically straight up. Sure, there are a couple of red candles in there, but for the most part, no exaggeration, straight up. But what I do want to point out is, zooming back here, on where some next potential battlegrounds are and all of that. So as far as areas of support are concerned, key area of support moving forward, I would say, is this level right here. Was a former area of resistance at 173, but just basic technical analysis when levels of resistance are broken and closed above, you want to see them act as support. So we'll go from red to green on that one, 173, if there is any sort of, like I said, bigger pullback. And then in terms of next potential battlegrounds, if this upwards move is going to continue, next main one, I would say right up there around 176, 75. And if the momentum carries even more so into Friday, after that level, next key level would be up there around 178.75. But yeah, if you get another big mover like today, uh, these levels of resistance could very realistically even be broken on Friday. I'd, I'd be shocked if you got as big of a day as it was today, but it is Apple. Clearly, a lot of people like Apple. When you see these movements start to occur, the volume can continue to pour in. Uh, but all things considered, monster move today. If you like pullbacks, you got a level right there at 173. But if you're looking to play some more breakouts, keep an eye on those areas of resistance. Real quick, I want to take a break and personally invite you to get signed up for this free live online webinar that I'm offering here. So if you've been enjoying what you've seen and you want to learn more about this tool, how it can and should be used to build consistency and manage risk, then definitely get signed up for the free webinar. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link down in the description box you can use to get signed up. Or if you're watching at my website, there's an area right there on the web page itself. So like I said, if you've been enjoying, then definitely go get signed up for the free live class. Next, E-L-Y-M, and we have, again, a nice, nice, exciting last 30 minutes. As I speak, this thing is getting higher and higher, and we better get that level of resistance. Maybe we can catch a breakout live here on video. So right there, $4.58 is going to be the main point. Now, the market closes here in 11 minutes, so there is a, a chance where you're watching this video, and you're saying, well, on my chart, the price is actually above 458 If that's the case, then you get to ask yourself a little bit of a different question, and that question is an exciting one. You could say, okay, is this the start of something bigger? The price is broken. There's a breakout. So is it a start of an even bigger breakout? Now, right now, the question is, will it break out? So still an exciting question because at least it's, uh, you know, getting very close. It's becoming very realistic that a breakout could happen. But like I said, if you're watching this and the price is actually broken through there, you just transition the question a little bit more to, okay, is this breakout the start of something even bigger? But both of those, anyway, you're asking are exciting questions in terms of areas of support. Got the tread line right there. So if you like to play pullbacks, you can see that level right there has done a good job of forecasting where some levels of support are at. But overall, from a pattern standpoint, draw this in here very quickly. Basically have a big old bull pennant, put the golf hole down here for you golfers, make it a little bit more visually appealing. So yeah, bull pennant pattern. We'll see if the bulls can indeed get the breakout. But if this breakout does occur, then is it the start of something even bigger? We'll see what happens on Friday. Next one, TSLA Tesla, and started off the day very, very rough with a move down, uh, but after that has been just slowly grinding higher and higher, and is now getting within striking distance of this level that I've talked about quite a bit, that red line up there at 177.65. So yes, it still has a bit of a, a journey it's gotta go on, uh, but it is well within striking distance. So I, at least in my opinion, I don't think it's you know implausible to think that, that a break couldn't happen on Friday. And that is just a very key level, because as I add more context here, looking back, you can see, that this 177.65 mark has just been a very annoying level. You can see right there, acting as resistance, resistance, resistance. So if the price gets up there, I, I don't think it's gonna be an easy battle, uh, but if the price can break through there, then that would just, uh, you know, not only from a breakout standpoint, but just from an overall strength standpoint, that would illustrate the bulls are really, uh, you know, showing some new signs of strength because the price, you know, that would be put in the chart up at levels that have not been seen for a very long time. So very nice bounce today. All eyes on 177.65 on Friday. So we'll see if the price can push through it or not. Next one, RIVN. Now earlier I made a comment about how if there's a bullish pattern, that does not mean the price is for sure gonna go up. Same is true for bearish patterns because that is what we have right now on this one. So if you are somebody that likes to play shorts or go with puts, 
uh, then you know I'm sure you're gonna like this pattern. But to be fair, uh, there is higher lows. So even if you like longs, I you know I wouldn't call you crazy to think, okay, well I think there's some sort of bottom forming because you're putting these higher lows in there, and that is totally fair enough. On the flip side of things, in terms of resistance levels, you have this downwards trend line right there. So let me actually make this a little shorter. We can make it more proportional. So we have our support, we have a resistance, and then to make it easier to see, let's keep the same color. So resistance, support big downwards move right here. So it's like an upside down golf hole up here. So this would be a bear pennant pattern. So again, just because it's bearish, not for sure headed downwards, uh, but I don't think anybody would be shocked if the price did come down here and get the break to the downside. Although as I speak, you can see this last 30 minutes, it's approaching that area of resistance. So uh, if you do think that there's gonna be some sort of bigger bounce to the upside, then again, it's not like you can only be a bearish sided trader uh, to take interest in this one. Uh, but anyway, look at it. I would say that the biggest way to just, uh, you know, summarize this is bear pennant pattern. Next one, AMZN, Amazon, very, very impressive mover today like or like Apple. And so first level, let me just map out and offer up a little bit more context. We can see the uptrend is very much strong in terms of areas of support. If you like to play pullbacks, then this former area of resistance right there, just based on that rule, when levels of resistance are broken and closed above, you wanna see them act as support. So 187.35, I could see that being uh, a level of support. If you wanna be a little bit more conservative, then the next level you could keep an eye on is that purple line there, the 50 period moving average. And as the name implies, moving average, so as time goes by, that line is gonna move itself higher and higher. So definitely keep an eye on that. And then in terms of areas of resistance, in fact, let's just go down here to the 60 minute time frame, meaning each one of these candle sticks is gonna represent now one hour instead of 30 minutes. Try to make it a little bit easier to see. You know, let's just go to the, uh, is this at all time highs? I don't know, let's check the daily time frame. Oh yeah, okay, so we are essentially at blue sky breakout territory. Now we do have a little miniature resistance right here just based on a very simple question. Where did the party finally stop today? And that was right up there at 189.80. So like I said, nothing fancy behind that logic other than just simply where did the price, where did the momentum finally stop? So keep an eye on that. But yeah, overall, Amazon in absolute beast mode right now. Next one, TQQQ, which is an ETF that measures the NASDAQ market. So if you believe the NASDAQ market as a whole is gonna go up, this one will also go up. And that is why this one had a very, very impressive day today. For those of you that watched yesterday's video, was talking about that area of resistance, but price came up here, broke through it, back test, and then just straight up. So much so that it was breaking all sorts of resistance levels. It broke the uh, 50 period moving average resistance. It break the, broke the 200 period moving average resistance. So moral of the story here, very, very impressive day here. I'm going to just get rid of those lines. In the very near term, as far as supports, once again, just going with that, um, you know, former areas of resistance, we can see resistance, resistance, uh, you know, you'd want to see them act as support. So now if there is a pullback, best case scenario, you'd want to see the price stay above that pink line. But even if it doesn't, remember, you still do have, have that purple line, which has got an upward slope to it, which is going to move itself higher and higher. So if you want to just envision that as a trend line that's drawn itself for you, then as long as the price does remain in the over, above the overall trend line, uh, the bulls are in full control. And really, next big battleground moving forward. Now, sure, you could call this little miniature area resistance at 62.10, but I want to be more focused on the overall level right up there at $62.60. You can see right here, provided some problems in the past, but all things considered, huge momentum today. We'll see if the price can get up there and do battle with that level or not. So that wraps up the top 10 stocks for you Bitcoin traders. I'll get to Bitcoin here in just a second, but for you stock traders, definitely go get signed up for that class. All right, we had a typo in there, but got to change. It'll be Thursday. Maybe if you had a very good eye, you thought it said Tuesday, and it did say Tuesday, but it meant to be Thursday, April 18th, next week at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So if you're stock traders, definitely go get signed up. Now let's talk some Bitcoin. One quick clarification here. We are no longer talking the 30-minute time frame. We are talking the four-hour time frame. Uh, Bitcoin is open 24-7, so I want this uh, to remain relevant for as long as possible. Uh, so if you're watching this, you know, 10, 15 hours from now, I want, you know, you to still have a good chance that everything I talk about here is still, uh, you know, in play and everything will be uh, because really nothing has changed per se from what I did about 24 hours ago because the main level still uh, apply. So really the first question you're gonna have to ask yourself is where is the price at relative to 71,500? So let's say you're watching this video 10 hours from now. Yeah, where's the price at relative there? If you're answering that question that the price is above 71,500, that would tell you that this level has been broken. That is a very good thing. And your next, next question would be, okay, well, how's the price doing relative to this area of resistance up here, this zone from 73,000 to 73,800? Maybe you're saying, well, Clay, the price is actually still down below 71,500. Fair enough. Next question would be, well, where's the price at relative to that trend line right there? If you're answering the question that the price is down below that line there, 
that would imply that things are not going so good and that the Bears have shown up in a very big way. I would be surprised if you're answering the question that way, uh, but you never know. And then if you're just saying, well, the, Clay, the price is still between these couple areas, well, then you're still just in consol consolidation mode. There's really no other way to overcomplicate it. So consolidation mode right now, and then based on how you answer those questions, you know, 10, 15 hours from now, you know, that'll dictate where things are at at that point in time. And as I did for the stock traders, I want to invite you crypto and Bitcoin traders because what you learn about in this class definitely can and should be used on Bitcoin in the world of crypto. So get signed up Thursday, April 18th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. I hope to see you there as far as these top 10 videos are concerned. If you enjoy these, do a couple things for me. Hit that like button, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you traded today. Give me your watches for next week. I appreciate it. Take, thanks for watching. Take care and go get signed up for the free webinar.